Um, let's go to Danny in Fort Worth, Texas. Danny, what's up, my man? Hey, John. How you doing? Outstanding. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for taking some time to talk to me. This is uh, this is awesome. So I listen to you guys all the time. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. It's uh, awesome for me too. How can I help this morning? Yeah, I want to try and be brief. So I'm summarizing a year's worth of history and a lot of stuff that has uh, I'll say bottled up over the last year. But okay. uh, the straw that broke the camel's back this most recent weekend is my dad completely disrespected my wife in our home. Ooh. And, um, and that's a tough one for me and, and for a multitude of reasons. But at the end of the day, I have to pick my wife. So, um, hey, can we stop there? Right? Th- can we stop there for a yep. second? Sure. Good for you, my man. Thank you. Hey, listen, I'm being serious and I'm looking directly in this camera and I know you're listening to me right now and you can't see me. Good for you. That's the right Thank decision. You. We're supposed to respect our parents, but people do not respect, disrespect our spouses in our homes. Good for you. Thank okay, you. continue. All right. So over the last year, we have, uh, I'm one of four children. Okay. Um, three of my siblings all have kids as well. My three boys, my wife and I have felt, are not treated with the same uh, priority as the rest of the kids. Okay. Or grandkids, I should say. Uh, so I've had our parents over, my parents over, twice in the last year to directly confront them about it and, and gave them plenty of warnings that, hey, we'd like to have you guys over to our home to talk about these things. We've done that twice. Okay. Uh, both times, no, there was no real animosity, no issues, nothing was going on from my parents. As far as we could tell, everything seemed to be fine. Uh, and then this last weekend, oh, I should back up a little bit. They they even went about two or three weeks ago and said, and just completely surprised us, showed up at our house at about 8.30 in the, on a Sunday morning with donuts for all the grandkids. It was a huge, huge effort. Yeah. Phenomenal. It was great for us. So we, we thought, okay, water's under the bridge. Everything's fine. And then my uh, my youngest son turned one. Just We had his big bir- big birthday. I thought it was a college graduation with how much my wife planned into it. Um <laughs> Awesome. But it was great. Um, my dad comes in, doesn't say it. I say hi to him and stuff like that. He doesn't say a word to my wife the entire time we're there. Mm-hmm. Deliberately uh, walks, avoids her, doesn't, won't talk to her. Um, she starts to notice it more and more throughout the day. It says, hey, did I do something to upset your dad? Ask me a couple questions. So I start looking at it and, listen, and kind of being like, well, you know, maybe she's just overreacting or missing something or maybe he's off or something like that. So I tried to look at it and uh, sure enough, I mean, he, he's right. I mean, I, I intently watched multiple in, potential interactions where he uh, avoided her I mean, to the point of, you know, they'd pass by each other and he'd intentionally look the opposite direction, things like that. Yeah. Um, so then I let the party go on. Uh, everything's fine. Next day, there's some other issues with my siblings that we were, that I was also addressing, but uh, not to get into that here. I set up, I opened up a group text to my dad, my mom, and my siblings. And I said, hey, guys, there's some issues I wanted to talk to you guys individually about. But um, my wife felt extremely disrespected in, in our house, and I, I, don't, I don't appreciate that. And I specifically called my dad out in that and said, Dad, I, I would expect I, – I'm, I'm frustrated to see – your leadership in our family and think that it's okay to treat my wife with disrespect because I know it wouldn't be okay for me to treat your wife with disrespect in your home. Um, and called, called some of the specific stuff out. Well, so he responded to me and uh, it's basically his, well, his exact response was, um, I was not once acknowledged all night long even with a hello until I said goodbye, keep dumping on us and place blame on us where we're, we are okay with that. Some things need to be figured out and we will not be the ones to point it out. I will not respond. to anything. Yep. Um, so again, I didn't want to do it all through text message. I, in my message, I said, I would like to address these things individually one-on-one, Sure. but these are, this is kind of where I'm at. What his text message to me said um, is that yes, we do have issues even though you've come over twice and told us, no, we don't. And she started it. So I'm not going to respond or, or something to that effect. Right. Like she started it. She disrespected me first. So sure. it's okay for me to disrespect her. On top of that, his response sets a precedence in front of my siblings that it's okay to treat my wife that way. And so, and so let me make sure I'm ahead. clear here. When you say disrespected my wife, he didn't call her names. He didn't laugh in her face. He, he, 
he essentially ignored her during an event at your home. Is that right? Yes. And so okay. then I asked him why. And, and in his response, he's he's directly saying, well, she did it to me first. Well, that's how I interpret it. She sure. didn't acknowledge me once, so I didn't acknowledge her, and I'm just going to completely – but there's uh, there's there's history there already. Sure. Where stuff like this has happened before. So and it, that's his way of 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 um, pouting. I don't know how else to put it. Okay. Yeah. And that's, maybe that's a little rough. No, but. dude. Men pout all the time. I I've done that before. Um. That's that's a way that that men can non and non abusively take power over a room is by hovering with their pouting. Right. That's a that's a powerful right. dude move. Um. So. Let me challenge you on some things before we dig sure. into your old man, okay? Yep. Who has made you the the home quarterback, or I would call the the moral character quarterback of your house? It seems like you are on prowl for, like, you're going to make sure you talk to your brothers and sisters about things. You're going to talk to your mom and dad about things. You're going to have these talks. Who anointed you, and that's that's a loaded word, I know, who anointed you the character and morality police of your family unit. Yeah, that's a really good question. I don't, I don't think anybody has that necessarily, or has given me that. I think maybe I appointed myself. I okay. Don't know. Okay. Um, I don't. Not that I intentionally meant to when you put it that way, but yeah. So, the second thing is, is you mentioned this, but I just got to say, dude, the worst thing you can possibly do ever is to address your entire family on issues of character frustration about your wife via text message right because everybody hears those things differently and i'm as you're telling this story i understand there's years of history that i'm not privy to but i wonder if my son and his wife called me over and said the way you're treating your grandkids isn't right it's not fair here's five reasons why you're treating them differently than you're treating my brothers and sisters kids and then nothing changes. And then I get another lecture from my son about how I'm not grandparenting in a way that he sees fit. And then I try, I reach out and I bring donuts. I'm trying. Now I'm now I'm going over. I'm I'm going, okay, we're gonna be hyper intentional about this. Nothing says I love you like a box of carbs and sugar, right? Especially for kids. Right. Right. And then I show up, I'm on high alert, I want to be present. I don't want to speak when, in say wrong things. I don't want to look the wrong ways. I want to be fully in. And then I walk in and I just happen to walk past my daughter-in-law and she's busy and she doesn't acknowledge me. And so I, my initial thought is, did I do something wrong again? I'm on the defensive now because they've already called me over to their house and lectured me twice. These kids that are half my age and half my wisdom have lectured me twice uh, I don't know what to do with this deal. And so I'm going to pass her a few times and make sure she sees me, make sure she knows I'm here, and she ignores me twice. Well, now I'm going to be – I'm get, my inner child's going to come out. I'm going to act like a baby. And if you're going to ignore me, then I'm going to ignore you, right? But I'm just wondering if these are grown-ups acting like children in this environment. Everyone's going to point a finger at each other. You're the guy that keeps calling folks over to lecture them on how they need to be better brothers and sisters and parents and grandparents. It just sounds like a lot of heat, man. And I'm wondering if there's a way that nobody can win in this deal unless they do it exactly like Danny wants it done for our kids, for my wife. I don't see it as a – like as if your brothers and sisters know your dad is a powder and he acts like a baby, I don't see that as a free license to now they can disrespect your wife. I don't see it that way at all. If your brothers and sisters know that about your old man, they know that about your old man, right? And if they know you're the lecturer, then they know that about you too. Um, and even if I have a license to disrespect somebody's wife who I love, I'm not going to because I'm a person of character, right? And hopefully they're that same way too. But it sounds like you are on high, high offense alert. Where does that come from? Yeah, so um, – Like the justice police. You're, like you're, you are ready to, yeah, no, you're, to fight. You're right. You're absolutely right, and I didn't. And it's great perspective, and I, I definitely haven't thought of it that way. Um, where, where does that come from, though? Because it comes from probably a good place. That your sense of justice comes from a good place. Where Where is that from? I, I think that's from a, a long history of. Um, I was expected to 
growing up, I mean, I was not allowed to make mistakes. I wasn't allowed to not say hi to somebody when you walk in their house. I wasn't allowed to, and, and I, know, I mean, to the point where we'd be uh, in significant trouble, whatever that looked like, right? Grounded or, or sure publicly and, and you know, whatever. Uh, so, and then that, um, the, I'll say that the, the, how do I word this? The um, parenting style my parents have changed significantly from my older sister and I mm-hmm. to my younger brother and sister, who is specifically the, the two that I'm, I'm addressing here. So maybe it's sure. this, this feeling of, um, and, and this this is a horrible way of wording it, but maybe it's a, a feeling of moral superiority, uh-huh. which is not true. Yep. Um, it feels like a uh, like a fraternity. We had to do it, so you have to do it. And y'all didn't have Kinda. it. Y'all didn't have it as hard as we had it. And so you're never really gonna be true brothers because we got branded and hit in the face with bricks, and y'all just got to right, r- right? that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. Um, so so that's that's part of it. Now the other piece of it uh, is probably some emotional response on my part because my wife uh, tries so hard to include everybody. Sure. And and to and to bring everybody over there, and it's affecting. She's starting to wonder, well, what am I doing wrong? Absolutely. And we've, we have had them over twice, and we have asked them, and they keep saying nothing. And then my dad's response kind of sounded like, well, there is something wrong, but we're not going to point it out. Sure. And I was like, well, thanks for your help, I guess. Like, sure. I mean, um, or, or for not helping. And so it was affecting the way my wife felt about herself and the way she um, – she she's crying to me and mm-hmm. saying, why am I – not good enough for your family kind of thing. There you go. Right. And for the, and for the last year I've been telling her a year and a half, Hey, if we'll just make the effort here, I know my family, they will respond and you'll be welcomed with open arms and love and kindness. And it just hasn't been the case. There you go. And so there's, there's probably some frustration there for me as well. And I want to tell you, I want to affirm that frustration. If anybody's mean or disrespectful to my wife, if they ignore my wife, if they're ugly to her, man, my defenses go up. My emotions go up. My desire to um, seek justice on her behalf goes up. That makes you somebody who cares about your wife, right? So here's right. here's a perspective I want to give to you, okay? Number one, stop being the justice morality police for the people who love you and people who are around you. It's exhausting for them, and more importantly, it's exhausting for you. Yep. And you are wearing yourself out psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, and you're wearing out the most important, deepest threaded relationships in your life, honestly, for not a lot of reason. And here, I'm going to tell you why. That leads me to number two. You've got to take your family members out of your box. And I've got a YouTube rant on this. But at the end of the day, you should have four or five people in your life that you allow to hurt your feelings, that you allow, you choose who hurts your feelings. You choose who, quote unquote, gets a vote into your life. You love your wife and you love your kids and you think they are awesome. And they probably are. They might not be, but they probably are, right? Right, right. At the end of the day, other people don't have to see it that way. And if you choose to set off every time somebody doesn't see it that way, you're just going to scorch earth around you. You're going to end up with a pile of bodies, yours included. And that's a waste of that's a waste of a joyful life. And so I would take my dad out of the box. You've sat him down and talked to him, right? You have talked to your mom and said, here's how we want, we would like y'all to show appreciation for our children. And they are communicating through their actions, No. And you can continue to go to war with that, or you can say, great, that's how they choose to live. The people I want in my life are going to honor my kids and my wife in a certain way, so I'm taking my parents out out of that box. Am I going to be mature and respect them? Of course. Am I going to invite them to birthday parties? Yep. And I'm also going to tell my wife, and we're going to have this conversation with her, they don't have permission to hurt your feelings anymore. There's nothing you can do to make them be different. They are who they are. Your dad's probably been had bouts of immaturity through your entire childhood. And then he probably tried to overcorrect with your younger two siblings and be the cool dad who just let stuff was cool and cool and cool. And that he probably found different connection with them than he did with you guys and probably treat your kids differently as a result. It is what it is what it is. 
what you are what you are choosing to do is let your character be defined by somebody else's actions. No, that's good. You are responsible for your character. You are responsible for modeling what a dad looks like to your your young kids. Okay? And so I want you to own your heart, your home, and that's it. And if your brothers and sisters are jerks to you, then they're not invited. They're just not. And that's not any skin off your back. That's not any skin off. It's not a testament to your wife's role as uh, how good of a job she's doing. It just is. And all of us have people in our families that come to birthday parties and act differently than we probably wish they would. And we can choose to invite them or not. And then we're going to just know what we're getting, right? We're just going to know what we're getting. We're going to move on. I'm not going to spend the emotional and physical energy trying to change other people. And that, man, I'm telling you right now, you are setting yourself up for a life of lightness, a a life of joy. In my family, my wife actually sends an email to my family. And they will say, here's when we're going to be in town. Here's what I want to do for dinner. Here's what I want to do after dinner. We're bringing games. We're going to go for walks. The guys are going to go out into the woods, whatever's happening. And she sets an agenda and it's awesome. The whole family's like, okay, sweet, cool. And right. we will say, we are not going to talk about politics this year. That's going to be a, a family deal. And my family knows I will get up and walk out the door and I love them, but I'm not going to subject myself and my family and my love, my beloved relationships to fights, especially when we only get to see each other a few times a year. I'm not going to do it. And so we're not going to talk about politics. We're going to talk about other things. We've got plenty of other stuff to talk about. And so it's just setting those boundaries in yourself and being okay with it, talking to your wife and letting her know that she is not on probationary status here. She is not at a tryout. She is loving her kids the best way she knows how. She's loving you the best way she knows how. And some people just aren't going to like that. And that is their problem, not y'all's. Is that fair? Do you get what I'm saying? No, no, I totally get what you're saying. And um, so I see a counselor on my own. Yeah. She always helps me. Um, talks me off the ledge, so to speak, like you are here. Okay. Yeah. Um, where um, our emotions cloud our reason and our logic. Mm-hmm. And so, um, no, this has been phenomenal. Uh, I really appreciate it. Question, is this going to be on the podcast here shortly? Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be launched cool. sometime, yeah. Um, yeah. Do me a favor. Oh. The next yeah. time your dad does something or your mom does something or your brothers and sisters do something, and it immediately sets your feelings off. It immediately sets your emotions off. Before you say anything, write them down. And then I want you to look at the feelings you've written down and demand evidence from them. So, for instance. I, I got you. Yep. Your, your, your wife is going to pull you aside and say, dad's ignoring me. He is completely disrespecting me. And you're going to see it happen. And you're going to write down. You're going to get you're going to get instantly pissed off and you're going to write it down. Dad's ignoring my wife, which leads to dad's disrespecting my wife, which is going to lead to dad. And you're going to fill in the blank on what's wrong with dad. And at that moment, I want you to get out of your dad's head because you don't know what's going on in there. He might be trying to tiptoe his way through a party to honor you, honor her, and he's just doing a crappy job at it. And he might be trying to just be a complete jerk and act like a two-year-old. And he might have 50 other things going. He might be not feeling good and trying to, right? And so I'll, after this call, I want you to not text, not electronically communicate. I want you to call your brothers and sisters who are on that text and say, look, y'all are grown-ups. I'm a grown-up. I should not have texted you guys. I'm sorry. I am not your parents. I'm not your moral police. I'm just trying to get everybody to love each other, and I screwed this up, and I'm sorry. And I want you sure. to not explain just let that be. And they may say, yeah, that's right. You suck. Take it. Just take it. And say, I'm sorry. You're right. And I want you to call your old man. I want you to call your old man and say, dude, I don't know what got into me. I'm your son. I don't have any business lecturing you guys. I know you love our grandkids. I know you love me. I know you love your wife. I was out of line. I'm sorry. And then let it go. And if your dad wants to talk to you after that, which he might, he might not. Cool. Let it go. Just like Frozen 1 and not Frozen 2. Not hold them back anymore. Let it go. Let it go, right? Um, but call them and apologize. Call your mom and say, dude, I don't know what I was in my, in my head. I'm your son. I'm lecturing my parents. That's not cool. I'm out. I'm not doing that anymore. Y'all are doing the best you can. I appreciate you. And then you and your wife get in a room and decide 
What are we going to get our feelings hurt over? And what are we not going to get our feelings hurt over? Who are we going to let hurt our feelings and who are not going to let our feelings, uh, let hurt our feelings and then move on. Then let it go. All right, Danny, you are, uh, I'm so grateful for the call. Appreciate your heart. Appreciate you being a guy who's trying to get it right, trying to care about people, but is also trying to wrestle hard with his feelings and emotions. You're a good man, and I appreciate you. Call me back after you call your family and apologize. I want to hear how those go. We'll have you back on the show. I want to hear how that goes. Can't wait.